We're going to explain the theory of operation of Title 24 lighting controls in the state of California. I'm going to put basically an illumination or power arrow on this page. Down here we have lights out, zero lighting power. Up here we have full output. This is the illumination or power draw that you could possibly get from the fully installed lighting equipment. You may think that what I'm about to tell you is just wishful thinking or something that's supposed to cure, occur in the future when people sleep in tubes and dogs can talk. But actually, this has been state law in this state for the past two years. So, oh, you can't read that. Let me try that again. This is full output and this is lighting out and you are required in many cases to install a manual dimming control. So it should be able to go all the way or at least down near lights out to full output without any other controls being put in the place. Now, because every manual dimming control requires click-click on-off functionality, then you will be able to put the lights out, but you should be able to dim all the way from full output to lights out unless somebody does something, and this is typical of lighting installers they will shave a little off the top when they put the thing together so now we will not be able to manually dim between minimum design output and full output we will actually have a dimming range between minimum design output and full design output because I've talked to people who put these systems in and they say okay we like to shave about five percent off the top five six percent to save the customers some money if you have a dimming slider or rotating button which is required in many cases and in many areas it has to be able to dim between full design output where they put a hard cap and minimum design output and of course click click on off but suppose we have a daylighting system in this area and daylight begins to come in this gives us a daylighting set point okay in other words, the point at the electric lighting is being reduced in the area due to daylighting. Due to daylight coming in, you have an automatic system. You are still required to have manual dimming range that gets up to that set point. But suppose now we have demand response in the area and it drops it down to 30 percent so here is our demand response set point all right so let's put that on there demand response set point right there all right now that manual dimming control should still operate. This is an area control typically in the area with the lights. Now it can only vary between here and here. But suppose the daylight, a bunch of daylight comes in, the daylighting set point for the electric lighting, this is one, 
now reduces to 2. All right. Now it has dropped below the demand response set point and your manual dimmer should now be capable still of manual dimming between the minimum design output and this daylighting set point that's lower than the demand response input. The big question here is not was the system installed properly to allow it to do this because none of these are allowed to override each other the lowest set point in an area is the lowest set point in the area and if you are required to have dimming in that area you're still going to have to have continuous dimming if it's called for between these points another question is did the person program the system properly so it's capable of doing this but the sixty four thousand dollar question is is the lighting manufacturers system even capable of doing this we will be examining over the next few months some lighting manufacturers equipment to see whether it can actually meet these criteria and other criteria required by title twenty four part six in the state of california don't be surprised if we have a few fails.